she, she feeds into the story, um, as Paul may have expressed, that the scene, the story is told through the eyes of Salieri. It's his um, version of what happened. And every time you encounter Constanza, it gives you more insight to the things that Salieri finds sort of appalling about Mozart. Um, when we first meet Mozart in the play, I mean, the title of the play is Amadeus, but you don't meet him until, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes into the play, and uh, it's our first scene together, and we're rolling around on the floor. We, we're just, you know, we've just fallen in love, and it's that stage where you can't keep your hands off of each other, and we've snuck away into this room to sort of play a little game. And, um, but it's crass, and it's funny, and um, that, that's when we first meet her, but then it, it she takes such a journey, which is why it's a fun role for me to play, because the play spans 10 years, so you, you see her at first when she's 19, and it's this sort of young love stage, and then, um, you know, as our lives progress and they fall into hardship, and all of the, um, the struggles that I think probably go along to go along with being married to a genius. I'm sure it wasn't simple. <laughs> um, and then, you know, in the final scene, she's nursing him into his death. So, um, all the scenes with Constanza, in my opinion, are very human. Yeah, I suppose that's true. Um, because the scenes with the court and with Salieri directly in which action is taking place are more about his career, about his composition, about his journey to try and make money as an artist. And then the, the scenes with Constanza are much more about how that personally affects you and the people around you when you are that struggling artist. Am I offending people I know if I say I don't know any geniuses? Um, <laughs> I mean, I, gosh, I can't say that I know someone specifically that I consider to be as probably amazing as Mozart was. Um, but, but certainly I think probably everyone in their life knows someone who is so, so brilliant at some thing. You know, either they're a tremendous athlete or they're really smart or they're uh, you know a, an amazing artist of some sort but that maybe socially is slightly awkward or difficult or you know that part of their personality is not developed to the same degree that this other aspect of talent is um and yeah i, I mean I, I know people like that for sure i'm sure at times i've been like that not you know um but yeah i think i think probably everyone can kind of relate to that a little It's wonderful. He's so fun, and so many times we know we know people in this business. It's sort of small and incestuous, but I actually didn't know him. But I did know a few people who knew him, so I was looking forward to meeting him and working with him. Um, but then I was slightly nervous because his wife Melissa is our assistant director, and so some of the scenes that Jim and I have are you know physically sort of intimate. And I thought, oh, is that going to be strange? But um, but she's lovely and he's lovely, and so they haven't made it awkward at all. Um, but he's really fun, you know, he's very free as an actor and physical um, and um, open and flexible and, you know, all, and, and inspired and smart and so it's, he's a great partner. Andrew is also uh, someone who I so look up to and admire. And, um, the, the role that he's doing is so intense and so large and there's so much text and um, he's so humble and just like so cool <laughs> you wouldn't think that he's stressed out or scared or nervous or and maybe he isn't I, um, but I'm really I'm really happy to be working with him and to be able to watch his process and I am. I'm having a blast, actually. I keep writing that in my journal, like, I love today. Um, well, you know, for me, it's, 
it's been sort of a nice break. The last several roles I've done have sort of carried the weight of the show. And so this is sort of a nice break that she's important to the story, but um, it's small but juicy, I guess I should say, but the role is. Um, so that's been kind of nice. I've had time to really feel prepared every day and really um, feel rested and also take care of other things in my life and not feel like I'm so consumed by rehearsal, which sometimes happens when you're doing a really massive role. Well, I, I suppose it's, we see it because we see the, the intent, you, you feel the intensity of the music, just I think like you do with a present day rock star, their music is sort of ever present, everywhere you go you're hearing it and you can't escape it and you know the lyrics without knowing necessarily who even sings a song sometimes. Mm. Um, and so the, the play is very infused with the music in that sense and I think that 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 helps to portray that. And then the way that Salieri is constantly um, overcome by it and is analyzing it and realizing and speaking about how magnificent it is. Um, so that aspect is there, but then I also think we all realize that the lives of rock stars are not necessarily as glamorous as they kind of seem. I think, I think everyone kind of can recognize that for everything that they have, there's also a lot that is sacrificed. And I think that that's certainly obvious in this as well, the hardship. Well, that one of the things I like is that it, it does give you a human perspective on someone that seems sort of historic and untouchable and of the past sort of makes it more present feeling. Um, but also, I was describing it to my mother, and I said, you know, the, the play really is about this struggle between Salieri and God, and why he wasn't given um, the same gifts. And I think everyone can deal with that frustration of feeling like, you know, I'm, I have to work so hard at this aspect of my life. And you see someone else who just has it, and they don't have to work hard at it. Um, so for me, that's, that's what I think about when I think of the play as a whole. It taps into that part of me, like, oh yeah, I know how that feels. <laughs>